everybody, NavyDog5184, and welcome to my reaction to part 5 of Star Wars Ahsoka. So, I am still really trying to recover from last week. That was such a huge moment and reveal for anyone who's a fan of the prequels, grew up with the prequels. I won't necessarily say I grew up with the prequels. I was a teen when episode 1 came out, but... You know, for me, it's kind of like the prequels were Star Wars for my generation. That was my generation's trilogy. So it has been really cool for me to really go back, you know, and like have these shows based on the prequels, like especially Kenobi, um, seeing Hayden Christensen come back. I've always enjoyed his performances of Anakin and everything that everybody complains about Anakin, like in my head, I'm just like, it makes perfect sense. And in a way it felt like it, even in episode one, it was kind of set up, you know, that he was just going to have trouble letting go and, you know, be angsty over everything, especially knowing how powerful he was. But, um, well, to get back onto the point, it's just been really great to see Hayden back as Anakin, uh, you know, just adding more to his character, especially having seen some of the Clone Wars. I haven't watched all of the Clone Wars, but I've seen some of it. And uh, I know at first it was a little hard for me to kind of, I, I don't want to say accept Anakin because it was just weird hearing him voiced by somebody else because in my head it's just like it didn't feel right without Hayden. But then, you know, it grew on me. And, you know, just kind of seeing him really at his best, it felt like in the Clone Wars. It's like you got bits and pieces of it through the movies, but I think like the Clone Wars, you really got a taste of just how good Anakin was and really why outside of the fact, you know, that obviously he was, you know, a very powerful Jedi and everything like that and how his fall would go to affect so many things. I think seeing the Clone Wars really made it that much more impactful because you saw just how much of an asset he was, you know, to the Republic and everything. And then to see him turn and become, you know, basically number two or maybe in some cases number three in terms of the Empire really strikes it home that much harder. So it was great to see him come back in episode four. Um, I still really don't have any meaningful analysis for episode four because Anakin is on the brain, though I will say, uh, you know, everything going on with Sabine, I know I was having a hard time really trying to figure out how I felt about what she did because Ahsoka, in a sense, was kind of all she had left in terms of anybody she really cared about. I mean, yeah, there was Hera, Hu Yang and all that, but, you know, with Ahsoka, it was obviously a different type of relationship, a stronger relationship. And knowing that the only possibility she had left was Ezra. And it almost kind of gets me back to that Anakin thing where it's that attachment is just too strong. And you could tell that she knew the right thing to do was to destroy the map. But at the same time, she didn't want a she didn't want to be alone, which anybody can relate to that and then also she didn't want to leave Ezra abandoned in a sense I guess you could say so you, I can understand all of that and good lord almighty can we get props to Ray and his performance as Balin Skull he is knocking it out of the park I don't know what his end game is I don't feel like that he is really siding for the idea of reviving the Empire or anything like that I feel like he has a separate endgame going on, but it also makes me wonder what Shin Hattie's um, endgame is too, because she seems to have a very contentious relationship with Morgan Elsbeth. So there's just so much going on right now. We've only got four episodes to go in this series. Uh, I fully expect part five to be a strong Anakin Ahsoka episode. So I don't think I'm gonna be getting too many more answers. I think I'm okay with that. Um, so I am very curious to see uh, what role Hera plays in all this. Uh, how did Ahsoka get into what I now know is the world between worlds? Thank you all for uh, letting me know in the comments. And um, you know, what role does can have in getting her out of it? If he does, what is going to go on with this? You know, is it going to just be Hera? And how do they even find Sabine? That's the other thing. So. 
I know not all of my questions are going to get answered this episode, but maybe a couple will. So let's go ahead and just get started. Uh, for those of you who are watching this who are also members, uh, definitely feel free to um, check out my watch along video as well. You can use the timer in the um, bottom right corner to um, know the place of exactly where I'm at so you can watch along with me in another window. And let's go ahead and get started. I imagine... This is Hera and the Squadron, at least what's left of it, looking for Sabine and Ahsoka. Where is everyone? That's what worries me. Well... Do a full sweep and report back. Wouldn't they have at least caught Hu Yang or something? I don't know. Hu Yang? I told them to stay together. But they never oh. listened. They never listen. Dude, not only does he sound sad as hell, he looks sad as hell. I don't think I've ever felt so bad for a droid. Dang, man, that breaks my heart. I went from being all excited to this, now I'm just all like down the dumps. Anakin. You look old. <laughs> Well, that happens. You lost the fight. I don't remember. Trust me. You lost. He almost sounds like Clone Wars Anakin. It means you still have a chance to live. I'm here to finish your training. Oh? It's a okay. Late for that. One is never too old to learn, Snips. If anyone can attest to that, that is Anakin Skywalker. What's the lesson? Live? No way. Or die. No way. I won't fight you. I've heard that before. Yes, you have. From both her and your son. Oh, what wow. that look. Kind of reminded me of episode 5 from Kenobi, that look he had when he was training with Kenobi. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, he still got the moves, man. He looks good. And credit Rosario Dawson, too. She has been doing great with her lightsaber work, too. You think they were aboard that ship? Every minute that passes without finding them here, the alternative becomes less desirable. There's something about the water. You might want to listen to him. You need to trust that boy. General, we need to figure out what we're going to tell Command. You need to listen to Jason right now. Oh, listen to the waves. The waves crashing? He must be hearing... No. The lightsabers. There it is. He hears Ahsoka and Anakin. There it is. She hears it. Nice work, kid. Parson, get your squadron airborne. I need you out over the ocean, low altitude, full sweep. We already did that. Well, we're doing it again. Viang, you're with me and the ghost. Right away. Jason, good work. Chopper, stay with him. <laughs> Jason has abilities. His father, Kanan Jarrus, was a Jedi. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, I love how his demeanor completely changed once Hu Yang brought that up. And is that the first name drop we've had for Kanan this whole series so far? Nice! You don't have much left to offer. I haven't taught you everything yet. That is truly Anakin's apprentice. Now, where's that dropping her now, though? What is this? So this is definitely prequel area. Clone... Is this the Clone Wars? Dude, look at his hair. The armor. Dude, is it the Clone... 
Oh! Whoa! He took her back to the Clone Wars! I mean, the hair, the armor, everything! This is the Clone Wars! Yeah? Yeah, no kidding! Thanks, Anakin! <laughs> Problem. Master! Wait! She's even got the green saber! Dude! So, this is a mix of a flashback and actual training? Am I getting that? I mean, I know that it was suspected that Hayden would probably be back for flashback episodes, but holy crap! Taking them straight back to the Clone Wars? Even putting in a young Ahsoka with this? Wow. Kind of makes me wonder where this training is going. Oh, she is not handling this well. Oh. Dude, that really puts a lot of stuff in perspective. Just this little bit. I mean, considering that she's been a soldier since she was a kid going through the rebellion and everything that'll take a toll on anyone the battle's not over yet there are more separatist droids approaching and it can read the room dude <laughs> she is not doing well they were following my orders i got them killed come here this is war soka as jedi it's our job to lead that doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. Look, when Obi-Wan taught me, we were keepers of the peace. But now, to win this war, I have to teach you to be a soldier. And that's the thing. That is a brutal reality. What if I want to stop fighting? Then you'll die. Talk about a brutal truth. I'm just trying to determine if this is part of actual training or if this is the natural flashback. Oh, something's got her shook. Whoa! Oh! Okay, um... How do you analyze that? And he came walking amongst the clones and then a quick shot of him as Vader. Knowing that he pretty much does the same thing when they're stormtroopers. Whoa. What a scene. I got us out here chasing ghosts. You do things your way because you care. This is why people like you. Is there a chance they're out here? Always. Especially with Lady Tano. Yeah, she is tenacious. Yeah, that so she is. Master. Yeah? What was he like? <laughs> Do you really want to know? Intense. That is a very good word for it. Oh, they fast forward a few years. Woo! Is this the Siege of Mandalore? Rex? We'll secure the perimeter. Come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> Rex, yeah. My man. She is killing it as a young Ahsoka, isn't she? But Anakin... Okay, so, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, it's because you weren't there. This was the siege of Mandalore. That's what I thought. By now. Looks intense. It was. Ahsoka, within you will be everything I am. All the knowledge I possess. Just as I inherited knowledge from my master, and he from his. And he looks so good. Legacy. He really doesn't look like he aged much at all, did he? That legacy is one of death. And war. But you're more than that. Because I'm more than that. You are more Anakin, but more powerful and dangerous than anyone realized. Is that what this is about? If I am everything you are... You've learned nothing. 
Don't say that. I gave you a choice. Okay, what am I missing here? Live. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Or die. Wait a minute. The eyes. Incorrect. Dude, he's in full Vader mode right now. Oh, I wasn't quite ready for this. Dude. Oh, wow. Oh! Yeah, full Vader mode, except he's completely mobile. Rebels flashback, anybody? Time to die. Dude, look at her. Dude, Ahsoka. Holy crap. Wait a minute. Ahsoka. I choose to live. Was that? Was that the whole point? There's hope for you yet. I hope I remember this for after the episode because I think I just finally realized something. But yo, I tell you what, that whole sequence. I mean, that actress that did Young Ahsoka. <clears throat> Absolutely nailed it. And then Anakin going full on Sith on her, but then going back. And then the fact he was talking about how there's still hope for her. I think there is something huge in the fact that when she said she chose to live, but she tossed the saber and none of them had a weapon. And yet that was what pleased him. A, that shows a lot of growth in Anakin, really. But I think that harkens to uh, even the Kenobi series. I'll I'll get into that later. <laughs> you really get a different vibe from her now. She, like when she was sitting up just before, she really seemed at peace. an idea. Hu Yang, why don't you show Jason inside your starship? I've been in a starship before. A Jedi starship? Come along. I'll show you the training room. <laughs> Very you have a well done. Your starship? Will you train me? No. <laughs> you know how to build a lightsaber? Yes. Will you teach me? No. <laughs> I know you've just recovered, but I have to ask. Where's Sabine? Stay back! If you're not like her, then why are you? More than you know. For Ezra. They took her with them. It's a fleet. They're on their way. I don't think they're coming to help. I don't think so either. After this little adventure, I don't think they're here to help. Wait a minute. Didn't Hu Yang say something about the hyperspace rings doing path along the travel pass of the sky whales? Hello, friend. Explain the nature of this mission, or I will see to it that you are stripped of your rank for resisting a direct order from Fleet Command. Okay, but you're not going to believe me. Oh no, he is about to explain this whole plan, isn't he? I'm not going to lie. 
and I know this is going to sound so sacrilege watching Star Wars, but watching Ahsoka Force Connect to communicate with these Sky Whales reminds me so much of Star Trek Four when Spock was doing the Vulcan mind meld to communicate with the whales. Okay. So wait, are we pulling up Pinocchio here and uh, shall we call this Sky Whale Maestro or Monstro, whatever it was? Get in there. Move us in. All right, all right. But you best come back inside. <laughs> like a frightened parent, he sounds like. Captain Gerard, this is General Sandula. I'd move your fleet out of there if I were you. That would be a very good idea. I mean, granted, it looks like the whales themselves can move, but I mean, I think they kind of have seniority. Okay, so maybe this is a good thing for Hera. Hopefully, that's a sign that maybe uh, there's some legitimacy to uh, what they've been claiming. At least I hope so. Hera, I'll find them. Promise. May the force be with you. Well, if that's not a call back to Empire Strikes Back, when they went off to go look for um, Han. Alright y'all, that was Star Wars Ahsoka Part 5, Shadow Warrior, and I tell you what, while I still have it in memory, again, another fantastic episode. It doesn't feel like a lot was done action-wise, but it's one of those things where there didn't really need to be much for much to happen, especially with what was going on in the world between worlds between Ahsoka and Anakin. And the reason I was saying that the end, at the end of that interaction, what reminded me of Kenobi, I was thinking about the flashback when it was a uh, Kenobi and Anakin, and Kenobi outsmarted Anakin and disarmed him, and he was talking about how Anakin's need to prove himself would be his undoing. I think that in terms of character growth, that was what Anakin showed. And that's why when Ahsoka tossed the saber and said she chose to live, how he kind of went back to his old self and said there was hope. Because I think that was a callback to that, him realizing that you don't need to necessarily kill your enemy to defeat them. I mean, in a way, he kind of even learned that even with Luke because what was it that really saved Vader in the end? It wasn't Luke killing him. I mean, granted, it was almost Luke dying, but by sparing him, you know, that was what really, in a way, defeated Vader and brought back Anakin. You know, but I think that was just the whole thing is, I think just Ahsoka was just so burdened with finding Thrawn, defeating Thrawn, and making sure another war would go on that it was probably weighing her down and consuming her almost and there's a part of me that thinks that's what Anakin was trying to display and going back because you saw how even at such a young age Ahsoka was not I mean she was getting upset with Anakin when he was joking saying that he wanted to be serious you know that she was worried that when she trained her own pad one it would be to fight you know not to be a keeper of peace and you could see how early on it was already weighing her down and how she just wasn't really getting, I guess you could say the big picture of it, at least that's the sense I was getting. But then when Anakin went full on Sith and she really had to get defensive and nearly lost, but she still managed, but you saw her. And even when that saber, like when she had Vader's saber and was about and it was like she was flirting and you saw it like change in her eyes but the fact that she uh, basically pulled a Luke and even though she flirted with it she didn't let it overcome her 
I, th I think that was part of the lesson Anakin was trying to do. And you could kind of see like when she came back and was revived, how I mentioned how she seemed to be so much more at peace. And I think that helped her to not be so bitter when she figured out what was going on with Sabine giving them the map and everything. Because I think she was just to understand, you know, just going back and re reliving what she went through, you know, when she was young. And knowing that Sabine pretty much went her whole life with all that, you know, I think that was a way to help her to empathize more with Sabine in that sense and understand that, yeah, she wanted to do the right thing, but when you spent most of your life, if not all of your life fighting, sometimes you just don't want to fight anymore. And especially when, you know, you've been alone. I mean, the Siege of Mandalore, you know, I'm sure that let the poor taste in a lot of Mandalorians' mouths in regards to the Jedi. And here Ahsoka is training a Mandalorian. But, um, you know, again, it's just, there's just felt like there was just so much going in there. And again, and the name drop for Kanan, I think that was the first time his name has been dropped this whole series, though everybody already kind of knew who Jason was, obviously. Um, oh man, I don't even know where all to go with this. I mean, there's just like so much to unpack between this episode and the last episode that I still haven't even fully unloaded. And I have to admit though, it's actually kind of amazing how in this one, no Morgan Elsbeth, no Balin Skull, Shin Hati, or anything like that. But it wasn't needed for this episode. I mean, this episode I would imagine was completely meant to be a very Ahsoka character driven episode, you know, for her to go through what she did with Anakin. And good lord, what they did with taking them back to the Clone Wars. Uh, one of the things uh, from the last episode that I don't want to say bugged me, but I did notice a little bit was how you could really tell how they're de aging Hayden for uh, the World Between Worlds. And at first it kind of bugged me, but then when I thought about it a little bit, I'm like, you know, in a place like that, it would make sense that things seemed more like an image rather than a physical being. Because if you notice when they went and they were in the Clone Wars, it didn't, if they did do any DH and stuff, they did a really good job in masking it, but he looked a lot more natural, a lot more real. So maybe that was intended for him to look kind of like a projection while they were in that part of the world between worlds but what they did with the clone wars and then even showing the siege of mandalore throwing rex in there my man rex man i would love to see more of him in this but uh whew. boy oh boy we only got three episodes left y'all i don't even know how i feel about that we only got three episodes left but this is gonna be another long week because I'm very curious to see what happens with Hera. You know, is the Senate finally going to understand that maybe there is something to this? I mean, you don't build a hyperspace ring like that for nothing. You know, with um, I've been seeing the term Grey Jedi a lot, Dark Jedi a lot. Um, obviously, not full on Sith. I mean, clearly not full on Sith, but at the same time, not really fully Jedi. So. I, I think I like the term Dark Jedi, so I think that's the term I'm going to use for a Balin Skull and uh, Shin Hati for now, because that's one that kind of feels like fits the most. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll go with Dark Jedi for this, but uh, I mean, again, the Senate has got to see that there is something to this, and hopefully, um, you know, the fleet seeing what they just saw will give them some credence that maybe there is something to these claims. I hope so, but still a lot of questions to be answered, and we got three episodes to answer them to, so hopefully they don't raise us with any more. Oh, I would say the biggest question I really want to answer, though, is what is Balin Skull's endgame? Because I feel like there's got to be something that he wants out of this, and it's not a rise of a new empire. Because I don't feel like that. that's really... Well, I can't say that's not what he really wants, because he was telling Shin that by finding Thrawn, they would be receiving a lot of power, so I don't know. Maybe he wants a role in this new thing, but 
either which way i think i'm gonna leave it at that because i don't think i have anything more sensible and intelligent to say in terms of analysis uh another fantastic episode this series for me has been a 10 out of 10 so far there has not been an episode i have not enjoyed i felt pacing has been great uh and very appropriate i think this was a good kind of while there was a lot of action it was more of a emotional type action rather than just straight you know pound you know pound them down action but uh so we'll go ahead and leave it at that thank you all for stopping by i hope you all enjoyed the reaction as much as i enjoyed reacting to this episode and i will see you guys for part six